Hi, today is October 6, 2011. My name is James Leone, and I'm going to do an update to the presentation I did on trying to discover the ancestors of Monroe Lewis, who is said to have died in McCracken County on March 28, 1919, but that I haven't found a death certificate for, who is father of Rossi Pearl Lewis Jeffrey, Lloyd Lewis, Fanny Lewis, who married Joseph and Joseph Joel Anderson, and Oscar Lewis, who moved uh, ultimately to Centralia, Washington, uh, and Orda Lewis, who had married a George Ova Simmons, uh, Terry Lewis, who I don't know what happened to, and Elmo, who appears to have been single, and a Muriel Lewis. Uh, he married Anna Ellen Starnes, and um, pretty much this whole family set shows up in census records. You know, Monroe Lewis and Anna Ellen Starnes shows up with all these different individuals that are listed on that I just read off. And just to cut to the chase, here is Rossi Pearl, Lewis Jeffrey's death certificate with Monroe Lewis and Anna Starnes listed as parents. Now, one interesting thing I didn't cover in any of my other presentations, I'm going to get to this. And there's one uh, child of Monroe Lewis that may have fallen off the radar because he, well, he moved away, and his name's Oscar Lewis, and I'm going to go into this really shortly. And try to show how I connect him. So, here is number two, second child born, so I give him a number. And there he is dead in 1972, and social security number issued in Washington. So at first glance, you don't have a clue that he would have anything to do with, you know, um, Monroe Lewis. But take a look here at his, um, World War II draft registration card. And it lists him as being born in McCracken. He got married in Tennessee to Maude Kelly. There's somewhere in here, their marriage license. Yep, there, there it is. Hard to see. And I think I may have a, Do I have a birth register for him? Well, no, I don't, but that's okay. <laughs> um, let's just get to his... Okay, there's his death. So I looked at the newspaper from 1972. It says, Oscar Lewis, can't read how old it says he is, a resident of Central Life for 56 years, died Monday. He was born in uh, December 24, 1878, Paducah, Kentucky, and uh, survived by four sons, and he mentions Miss Fanny Lindsay which is also reinforcing the fact that the subject individual's grandmother is was had a second husband with the last name Lindsay. Let's just look at Rossi Pearl. Yeah, we already looked at Rossi Pearl Lewis's death certificate. So now we're looking for a Monroe. He was born around 1850 somewhere. And we want to place him uh, with some parents. Right, and the censuses 1850 and forward are all censuses that have everybody in the household listed. Prior to 1840, you don't have that luxury, and we'll be dealing with that in, during this presentation. So, set aside my rule loose over here, and hopefully I was organized as I imagined. Yes, I was. So I looked. I saw him, Monroe, by the way, appearing in the household of a 
Randolph Lewis in the 1850s. Here it is. There's Monroe, 1850, zero. Um, it's the only Monroe in Tennessee, as far as I know, but I didn't print out that document of all the Monroes in the country in 1850 to show you that it was, but trust me, there he was. Now, in this 1850 census, he's just merely age. Seven twelve, seven months old, right? So probably born early 1850. And near him are two Starnses, by the way. And I'll just mention this. There's a Burton Lewis living around Temperance Hall, living with the Driver family. I don't know why it could be that Burton was the son of a Sarah. Although some people on some of the message boards... Uh, for the driver family at genealogy.com says that he was a bound boy. But in fact, in 1860, Monroe Lewis was a bound boy to Johnny Robinson. And what does that mean, bound boy? Well, bound boy, a little bit of article here, it's written in Genealogy Today, and usually referred to someone who's taken uh, is really an indentured servant but a lot of the time he's talking about other orphans but in this case Monroe was an orphan because we can see right near where he's living there in the second set that I have for the second wife of Monroe was still about the same age there living with three of Nancy Lewis's children by her first marriage with um, R.H. Fisher, uh, still in DeKalb County, Tennessee. But one thing I'm going to point out is going to be very, very, very tremendously important in this later presentation, because this is going to start focusing on Randolph pretty quick. I'm just making my way to show you this is, this is the guy. Is a fact it shows him there in Missouri. That is huge. So, what does it have to do with the earlier presentation? Well, we will get there. Um, you know, Randolph happens to be living next door to some of the Fitchers too, and Martha Starnes, who married Natalia Brock. So, there's a lot of people that come into play later on in this genealogy that, that works. Randolph Lewis basically remained married up to this Nancy until she died between 1870 and 1880, apparently. And the Saffirona, who was the daughter-in-law, he ended up living with her when she joined, I guess, maybe her sister. <laughs> <laughs> living in the household with uh, her sister's husband, Felix Smith. I don't know uh, too much about the Fisher family, but their other researchers confirm that. And basically there's the marriage date between Riley Fisher. I don't want to get too much into it. And I'll also say that even though that there has been evidence presented on one of these boards about that... Um, Randolph Lewis's wife's name was Lucretia Williams, and there is a marriage date here. That marriage date doesn't make sense. It may make more sense as I get more information. But, um, for now, I will leave it at that, just to say this may be a false positive, and the, the indexing for this record that covers a number of pages varies. They look identical, so you can see here the way this page looks. That's index Randolph. And then over here, is that the same? This one is indexed as Randolph Morris. And that looks exactly the same. 
They don't know whether it says, basically they, what they're saying is they don't know whether this is Morris or Lewis, so they index to both of them. But still the date is way too late, and here, now we have more of a Lucretia looking name, but going with the Williams. And there's just other mentions of bound boys, or basically indentured sir, people that are in a contract with the people that are providing care for them. Now, um, here is an important piece of information that might help identify the wife, and this is not even the main focus of my talk, I'm just going into it because it may be helpful. Someone looked on the Smith County, Tennessee deed books, and December 1846, Randolph Lewis is named as a descendant of Giles Williams. Uh, and their consent was needed to sell a piece of property to a man named George Myers. And I'm assuming that his wife, Lucretia, <laughs> they're calling Lucrecy here, was actually um, the reason he was called in as you know descendant for, I guess, consent from husband. Okay, so we have a situation, and I, I, yes, I'm pretty sure I showed all these marriages. And one important thing to note is on this set right here, this is 1850. We're trying to guess, well, when did this guy get married? Um, probably between 1840 and 1843 by my estimation. And here he is in the South Division of Smith, Tennessee. Keep that in mind, he's 1850. So he probably wouldn't be the head of the household in 1840. And just to look, there aren't a lot of Randolph Lewis's floating around. There are three of them. There's only one that was born in 1815. And at, at this point, uh, when you when you you start crossing over into uh, 1840 and earlier census land, you know you're not going to get much of a story out of what the census provides you. All you can do is try to gather as much information as you can and you get the feeling like you've solved everything once you're able to identify all the, the people that are uh, listed in a household with the various date ranges uh, for those censuses between those years. Now normally we would look backwards and the first thing I'm going to do, which may end up being a mistake, is I'm going to dismiss a man named Benjamin Lewis who is living in Smith County, Tennessee I believe in 1830. Here, but he's also indexed as Lowry, so it's a mixed result here. I'm giving it a close. I would, God, before I thought, oh yeah, that's Lewis, but now I'm looking at maybe it's Lowry, and I can't really show it that well anyway. The other Lewis that was in Tennessee at all was a woman named Murray Lewis, but I haven't found a connection. And then there's so there's Joseph, there's Larry. Now when I look at Joseph, I really almost convinced. Um, and there's some markings there for some old stuff. God, if I can get this to stay. These census records, by the way, are two pages long. I it says Joseph D, but and that's clearly is a D that I, it's a Lewis. It more or less forms what looks like a Joseph, but the G's kind of big, and I'm wondering whether that could be Randolph. That's just speculation. I'm kind of stuck at this point, and. You know, I don't know who the members of the household are. I suspect, really, that in 1840, you know, okay, there could be a dad, a Randolph dad in 1840 there. Could be. Um, it's not guaranteed, and I need to try to get a story and some context for working my way back from something before I have, even have a chance, really. So I consulted the Lewis genealogies to the Lewis family. And so here is number one by Terrell Lewis. Now mind you, even though I've, all these things that I'm going to show you doesn't prove anything yet. 
keep that in mind. And here on page 41, it mentions at Colonel Charles of the of Buckeye Land, father of a Randolph, who married his cousin Mary, and they had issue. And one of those issue was Randolph. Now this doesn't give me the date. I get an idea by looking dates near it. Oh, okay, we're somewhere in the 1700s. Okay, well, yeah, it could be, you know, not very solid. The next one that I have is this one, the genealogies and Lewis and kin of the kindred families. And it reports to be the highest authority ever to walk the planet. And on page 101, although I don't know if I agree, because it's just so goddamn confusing, but in the earlier generations, but anyway, it's got a Randolph Lewis, son of Charles Lilburn, and Lucy Jefferson, and and he married Mary, daughter of Robert Lewis the Bird, and there was a son named Randolph. No dates though. No, okay. Then there's a Lewis's Mary Weathers and their kin. I know I had found this earlier. By the way, all these snapshots that I have came off of Google Books in the courtesy of Case Snapshot that was able to snap portions of the pages that I wanted. And here is a Charles Lewis of Buckeye Land. Uh, so, and then it says he's got a son, Charles Lilburn, married Lucy Jefferson, then a Randolph who married Mary Lewis, and a son, Randolph. And I got a date, the 1722 for Charles Lewis of, of Buckeye Land, you know, so I had 20 years, 1740, Randolph, 17, uh, 1780, well, you know, that could be, that's kind of quick, it could be as much as, oh, okay, about 1800, well, we're getting close to that Randolph, let's see what happens. Then there's this one that probably does the best job of getting dates in for the branch that I am interested in, though not so great. Um... that name. Of course, I can never get to the page anytime soon. But, okay, because I can ramble and entertain you while I ramble. Oh, here's Charles Lewis of Buck Island. And it goes into his will. I can burn the page. And then... Here is a Randolph Lewis who uh, says now died 1809. Oh, okay. Married 1790. Oh, okay, That's sounding good. Mary Hal Lewis. Okay, we're talking about the same one. Then he has a son, Lilburn. And then he's got his son, Randolph B. B. A. A. C. Who went to the West. We don't know anything else about him. So, It's getting close. A man that was married in 1790 supposedly died in 1809, a few years before the earliest year that my Randolph reports as his birth date is there. Uh, it's looking promising. I, I should look into this this part and see if I can get some more details. And I did. And so I was able to find three books in Google Books and in the same manner in which I got most of those other copies there, um, I was able to get this book, The Earthquake America Forgot. <laughs> you saying? Why would The Earthquake America Forgot have anything to do with the genealogy? Well, let me tell you. Chapter 1 is on the Jefferson Connection. <laughs> okay. And in this chapter, basically, it describes how um, Charles Lilburn Lewis, uh, who married Lucy Jefferson, started getting some financial trouble and ended up losing most of his wealth, really. And his two sons, uh, Randolph and Lilburn, were able to kind of grow what they had from their father a little bit. And they had slaves, unfortunately. And they sold their land and went out to Kentucky where the land was cheaper and bought 
a lot of land out there and ended up um, settling in Livingston County, Kentucky, in which there is a pretty big scandal that, that happened, unfortunately. And so I'm just going to, before I get into any of the details here, I'll admit right now I have, let's see, um, one ancestor that ran a brothel and another ancestor that uh, left his family and joined a big, uh, <laughs> joined a second uh wife and he lived a life as a bigot until he died and therefore his second family's children were denied their revolutionary pension okay so all that set aside now to work your way back to president jefferson though by this family that i'm looking into um and i'll say right now just to, to caution you know, i don't have any final conclusions but i'll get into what now the different possibilities are and how it's changed a little bit from what I thought before but not too much we're still in the same area and um, is that you're gonna know an awful lot <laughs> there's an awful lot of detail about the ancestors of Jefferson and the people that surrounded him and of course any descendant of Jefferson's sister shares his ancestors and so it would be quite a genealogical find if this turns out to be true um, and again, we're talking about a guy that was showed up in Tennessee, but at one point he claims Missouri. The other year is he claims that he was born in Tennessee, or it was said that he claimed he was born in Tennessee. And I'll even provide reasons why he might not have been too clear about where he was born, but it was a good thing he mentioned Missouri. Now, basically what had happened is is that uh, Lilburn and Randolph left Abernale, Tennessee and ended up settling in Kentucky in about 1808. And we'll actually see him in the 1810 census. Bury the yes, I did, but here it is. He is the Randolph Lewis there. And by going by what is in the book and everything that I know, Charles L. Lewis here would be the father. It'd be just him, Lucy Jefferson, and his two daughters, Lucy Ann and Martha, living with him in 1810. And then for Randolph, I, I can place everybody based on the birth dates that I have. This is Smithland, that's the place they lived. Randolph is the son of Charles Lilburn, and I've got Warner and Lilburn. Right, you know, everybody's in the right age age range, how everybody that's mentioned. This is in 1810. Now, in 1811, something happened. I'll go down my packs here. I tried to do a presentation earlier today, and I realized I just wasn't ready. Now, in fact, there are three books that actually go into this family. This is the second best book. This book provides a few gems the others miss, and this is about the New Madrid earthquake that took place around 1811. That's what this is about, too. It's a huge 8.0 earthquake. I've never experienced anything that big, and I've lived in Los Angeles for a number of years. And this book is all about it. It's called Jefferson's Nephews. It's very good. It provides a lot of details and a lot of clues I was able to use to follow through on some of the descendants, but I still have, don't have a complete picture as of yet. So just to review, we have a Charles Lewis who married Mary Randolph, and his son, Charles Lilburn Lewis, married Lucy Jefferson. I've got some support for that, but I'm not going to get into too much detail on it, because I'm trying to find Randolph right now. Charles Lilburn and Lucy had, I could tell, ten children. The subject, the two people that end up being the subject of that book, or, or three actually, ends up being uh, Lilburn, Randolph, and Isham here. Now just to get into some of the evidence as to what had happened to them, because this is going to be very important. Uh, this Charles here, the oldest son, died in some kind of military duty, where um, right here. An officer was writing the president, um, and around August 28th, 
1806, um, Charles Lewis, the eldest son, just died of inflammation of the head, really. And so this is basically a letter that was written to Thomas Jefferson, I think. <laughs> it's not really clear by the way it is. Um, then Lilburn Lewis, which will be very important, very central to this, because I have a new theory. Now, previously my theory was, and I'm still going to keep my other video up, I was debating it, was that Randolph Lewis, who married Mary Howe Lewis, as in those all five of those Lewis genealogies, did it, my theory was is that he was the father of Randolph Lewis, as they said, but because he doesn't mention a son, Randolph Lewis, in his will. I had assumed that this Randolph Jr. must have been born after he died. And he ended up actually um, killing himself, as far as I could tell. And so did Lilburn. And Isham was in a, a, a suicide pact with his brother, but he ended up leaving and going to, um, got married at Nanches Trace, which I'm not clear as to whether it's in Mississippi or Tennessee. And then when the War of 1812 was being fought, he went down to, to New Orleans and, and battled the British after the war was actually over. Uh, battle lasted a day, but apparently he was one of the casualties, supposedly, and uh, if he is, he would be the, un, the unknown soldier down at... Um, Chalmette Cemetery in New Orleans. And this Craven Peyton who married Jean Jefferson Lewis was a big creditor to, um, to the family. I don't think she ever came out to Kentucky. They all moved to Livingston County, Kentucky, if I hadn't made that clear earlier. So before Lilburn Lewis left, he married a woman named Elizabeth Betsy Lewis in Goochland County, and I found that marriage record. And according to the book, she died around 1809, and then just after that, Lilburn remarried to a woman named Latchy Griffin Rudder. And when he remarried Latchy Griffin Rudder, um, he then got into trouble because what, what happened is he just got outraged guess maybe he was drinking, I'm not sure, um, but the details are outlined in that book, and ended up killing his slave, a uh, teenage boy named George, and trying to dismember and hide the body, and uh, the earthquake brought his chimney down, and a dog came by and dragged a body part out to the road, and was discovered gnawing on it after they tried to burn the body. And he was caught and he was indicted. And rather, before his indictment was scheduled to go to trial, he wrote a, got in a suicide back, pact with his brother Isham, and they both were going to kill themselves. Well, Wilburn did kill himself, but on accident, whereas Isham fled just got the heck out of there. He escaped from jail, and then he got married, then he died at the Battle of New Orleans. Now, meanwhile, uh, his wife, Leticia, as she was called at the time, even though the marriage record says Latchy, and that's what I have in my database, had a son named James. Um, at least he names as James in his will, so let's get to his will right, right now. Um, There's Lilburn, and he names his father as a ligatee, um, and his sisters Martha, Mary, and Nancy. And he makes his father the executor, he names a few people that live around there, and then he writes a note, and this is on April 12, 1812. Rocky Hill, Mr. James Cowley, I've fallen the victim to my beloved but cruel Latitia. I die in hopes of being united to my other wife in heaven, which would be his first wife, Betsy Lewis. Take care of this will and come here that we may be decently buried. And then um, 
he wants to be buried in the same coffin and same grave as his brother Isham, which he plans on uh, having a suicide pact with. Because basically, he and Isham were both involved in this killing. Leticia took off with her son James in fear of what he would do. Um, fled. And she ended up going, guess where? Right to this epicenter of the earthquake, New Madrid, Missouri. <laughs> and then um, finally on the 10th, he writes his note, goes up to the gravesite where his um, mother, Lucy Jefferson Lewis, is buried. She died in 1810. Uh, and he was going to demonstrate to his brother how to, how to pull the trigger and all that, and it went off on accident. And Isham took off, and so he goes, I owe you no malice, but die on account of your absence of my dear little son James. I don't think he was um, uh, he was certainly going to be convicted of this murder. So it wasn't, wasn't her. <laughs> I'll, I will, I'll say that. So what about this James? It's going to focus. The focus is going to change on this James. Now, just in case the, the old theory that I had, and it still could be valid, is that here's Randolph Lewis's will, but it, there's no mention of a son Randolph. And in um, I'm going to give this guy credit, Boynton Merrill Jr.'s book, Jefferson's nephews. Nowhere, uh, he mentions widows, uh, orphans, and he mentions how um, Leticia took off to go live in New Madrid, I believe. If I didn't get it from him, I got it from another book. And um, he goes into what happened to the descendants of both Lewis and Randolph, and um, nowhere does he mention a Rand uh, Randolph Jr. And he's, he's, dug, he's dug through all these court records and everything. So I'm starting to doubt, uh, well, did he just not mention him? Or because they weren't mentioned earlier in the book? Or could it be there's another explanation? Now, in his book, he also mentions that there is a son. And that son... Actually, I don't know if it was mentioned actually in this book. Um, somewhere in one of these three books, it says the son was not just a James Randolph, but it was G uh, not just James Lewis, but James Randolph Lewis. That's an important little piece of information, because guess who was born right around 1811? Bingo. There we go. So that is my latest theory that his name was born as James Randolph Lewis. And as they did in Kentucky later on, he started using his middle name as his major name. So he went by Randolph, not James, because there probably were other James Lewis's. So to differentiate himself, he... Um, he did that. That's that's my theory. Um, I'm looking through here to try to find where I see actually the name James Randolph Lewis. Now it could be in the other transcription of the will, the better transcription of the will. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Uh. There's Lisburn, and there's a James R. Lewis, and there's going to be... He has a child. He's calling James R. Lewis. That very well could have been James Randolph Lewis, so maybe I just assumed that. I don't know. Let's see. This is the chart in the earthquake book. My God. It's 
really hard to tell. And they're talking about how these are descendants of kings and queens of England, which I don't know if exactly is really true. But if they are, I wouldn't want to take away from them. Here is... Now this, they get wrong. I mean, from the will, it's obvious he killed himself, but... Um, see whether I got it's worth taking the time. There it is. James Randolph, and that is so important. There is the birth date. 1812. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Especially from what I know from this family. I've got myself another theory, and I think that now... It's rather than, I mean, could, there could have been a posthumous birth. I'm not denying that, but it seems to me a little more likely, given what I've seen in these other books, of no mention of a Randolph Jr., especially in his list of descendants. But I think that this James Randolph is the same guy. Now, what happened? Now, there's some, there's some holes in what I'm saying. I'm going to get into what happened after this. Um, so I set these books aside. Okay, and again, I've already shown as much as I could find in birth records anywhere. And granted, there ain't, they ain't great in Tennessee or Virginia or even Kentucky at that time. There aren't really any other Randolph Lewises to to account for it. You know, the Lewis uh, the the um, Lewis genealogy is saying that Randolph is the son of Randolph, and I don't know. There be I, you know. This theory I'm going to put forward may not even be right, but let's just go over in case he was uh, the child we're interested in. in the child we are uh, interested in. So there's a post here, another one on loose family genealogy form. This was made in 2002, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it too great. Maybe. So what what ended up happening to Leticia? Well, she was born Leticia uh, Rudder. And she became Leticia... She, Leticia ended up marrying Christopher Houts. And he was James R.'s guardian. So I tried looking up census records, and I didn't find much. And I was going to scratch my head, well, what, what the heck happened? I did find this 1830 census, and there's someone of the right age that would fit in this hole. And he's in Scott County, Missouri, as um, Burton Merrill says. Burton Merrill got his evidence by looking at records in the Livingston County archives to see how the land was divided. And there is a marriage between Letitia Lewis in Livingston County and Christopher House. There is Lilburn Lewis's marriage to um, Lachie Rudder. Here's just an, uh, an outline of another family doing research on it. Now, I had more information than this, so what the hell did I do with it? There is a biology, there's a local bio, biography about uh, Christopher Houts here. For God, here it is. Okay, so this helps shed some light on what happened. And this is also posted the same thread. Um, this is posted in June 2002, and it's a copy of the history of Johnson County, Missouri. What does that have to do with anything? Well, 
it talks about G. Will Houts, the son of Christopher G. Houts, and it mentions how Christopher G. Houts um, died in 1840, and he had moved to White County, Illinois, in 1835, and his first wife, Letitia Lewis, who we saw the marriage for, um, gave birth to two children, John and Christopher B., and it doesn't say anything about it, and then it says that she died first, and he remarried in 1824 to a woman named Sarah Meyer. So we got a, a young boy named James Randolph, born 1812, his mother dead when he's 12, and then he ends up living in the household in 1830, uh, when he would have been 18 with the Houts. And then in 1840, I do think that that wasn't a Joseph D., but that was a Randolph. D., I don't know why, living there, um, Smith County, Tennessee, same, same M. Perhaps. Could have just as well been a Joseph. But we have someone born around the right time, the middle name Randolph, with descendants that we know would juggle around their middle and their first name a lot. Looks pretty promising. Um don't know if his wife, Letitia, would ever have a will. Don't know what the law was back then. If they were still kind of using English, English common law, then a lot of property would just accrue to the husband. So a lot of women, unless they were single and unmarried, wouldn't have wills back then. At least in England. I know more, I actually know about more about what they did in England than they did around here. Um, now this transcribed will has just a little more information in it. It's just a little more complete than that abstract that we had. I'll try to get into some more details about this Randolph here. Let's get back to it. One detail I'm missing. <laughs> Very important detail I'm missing. God, I almost forgot it. Uh, Burton Merrill says that when Letitia fled, she fled to New Madrid, Missouri. And I may have already mentioned that. And of course, Randolph, in one of his senses, says that he was from Missouri. Now, coming out of a situation where your father dies, your mother remarries, and she dies, right when you're about 18, you got to get out of the house right away, the family you came from that at one time had some wealth is broke. Everything was sold off uh, by trustees after Randolph died um, to pay off debtors. They, they'd basically gone bankrupt at that time. And the family was pretty much scattered. There was some centrality of the family around actually New Madrid because um, of Lilburn Jr., and I think maybe I could show that here. A Lilburn son, son of somebody. is buried at, at New Madrid in New Madrid County. So this is the Randolph that died. This is his wife. She died shortly thereafter. This Charles Lewis was still in Livingston County in 1832, according to Burton Merrill. Howell ended up going back to Virginia. So did Tucker. It says here Robert. Robert R. Which also could be what that other one is. Moved to Lake County, Tennessee. And the last record I get, I have of him really, is his marriage record. I. I don't know where I get the 1866. It strikes me as being wrong. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. 
Um, supposedly married a woman named Mary Donaldson. I'm not sure. Oh, the first child that was born between Robert Lewis and Mary Donaldson is said to have been in 1866 from something I read. I think. Anyway, here's there's Lilburn, and Lilburn's buried at New Madrid. There was some remnant of the family that remained at, at New Madrid. Everybody else went back to Virginia or went to Tennessee. Susanna went back to Tennessee, and then the single daughters probably went also went to New Madrid. I, I'm not too clear on that. And Warner Lewis was living in Liberty, Missouri as late as 1880. Um, okay, now other pieces of evidence. We've got names like Howell and Warner. And Warner um, comes from really Augustine Warner, um, who's an ancestor of, of, of Randolph Lewis here. And Howell comes from, well, <laughs> uh, Randolph Lewis's wife was, was Howell. Uh, wife's mother was Jane Woodson. I don't know where that comes from. Oh, Mary Howe was her grandmother. Okay. So, now let's get back to some of the, the names of these children again of Randolph here, and let's see if we have any more information that's going to help us. So here, here we have, uh, you know, a son born in. 1843, and that's by the 1850 census, by the way. Named Warner. Monroe. Now, that, that rings a little bit more like James Monroe, and Jefferson was, of course, in the same political party as James Monroe, as, as he was with James Madison, but Monroe was later. But the name Warner really sticks out. Um... Monroe kind of sticks out. Not as well as a Warner, but it does, and him naming his son Warner, I don't know how unique that name was, but certainly goes with... Now, I, these may be one and the same, and the census taker in 1850 may have been just sloppy, but then again, I think that Warner, this first Warner, died. Um... And then he had another Warner, and there's a J, and I bet you that it might be a James. And this other, here's a James. There's a Warner, there's a James. I bet you they were both, yeah, they probably both died. Mourning meaning sadness, perhaps. Geneva, I haven't really followed these that forward. And this is the second wife, Nancy Gregston, who had married Riley Fisher. But I find the Warner... Uh, evidentiary in part and the use of James to be evidentiary in part it supports this overall idea that came from this branch of the family and I'm not seeing a lot of early records anywhere I'm looking for for a a Randolph anywhere Randolph Lewis I've seen Lewis Randolph's time a dozen but not Randolph Lewis's big difference so that's where I'm at right now. My leading theory is is that the Randolph that we're interested in was a recorded birth date of 1812. He's given himself a birth range of anywhere from 1810 to 1815, saying he was born in either Tennessee or Missouri. So what had happened is just after he was born, his wife took off and then his father killed himself. And... I mean, she was pregnant with James at the time the murder took place of their, their slave George. And so then he was born by the time the will was written. And it was just, they were just getting ready to go to court and he killed himself. And she fled for her, her she believed it was her safety, uh, as far as I know. And, um, and according to Burton Merrill. And that child, it makes sense. The only thing it doesn't match up, of course, is the James. But the other book over there says James Randolph. So now I've got something to latch onto. Now I got a real record to say, you know, that 
gives some continuity, and I could say, well, um, he switched his first and middle name like a lot of them did all the time. I mean, my God, there were some people in later generations um, that had, but you know, but the only thing that's counter against that information is the fact that. the eldest subject person of the group that I'm doing this for, uh, the grandmother was, um, I have no evidence she ever used any name other than Fanny Lewis. <laughs> Her husband used Joseph, Joe, Joel, all these other things, so I, you know. Anyway, so this is a pretty good set of leads, and the problem I have right now, I'm going to have, is... This Randolph isn't as famous <laughs> as his earlier generations, and so no one's going to have a reason why to go in and look over um, his records and publish a book about it. And so my focus is, is to prove or disprove the theory that I have right now, that this Randolph is really James Randolph Lewis, and that... He's the father of Monroe. Uh, the marriage date I have for the Prairie of Williams doesn't work. I may have already mentioned that. And that, uh, it's a Laurel Williams in a different county, but in a, an adjacent county, Wilson County, um, two years after Monroe was born. So he may have been married as much as three times, and because the first wife died before the 1850 census, I just don't know who it is. And that gives more weight to um, to the idea that this 1840 census was in fact Randolph and not a Joseph D because he's got members living there in the household so that's I'm going to stop for now so again it isn't proven and again at the end of the day if this never really leads anywhere if it never really can be proven um my thoughts were earlier is that DNA is what's going to sort this out ultimately. But I've looked at other common uh, descendants of this Charles Lilburn Lewis, and their DNA, even though it's well documented that they descend all the way back to the first Lewis, the senior to the line that, you know, intermarried with Warner, Augustine Warner, and it's cousin to George Washington and all those other <laughs> fancy names. Um, their DNA markers aren't really matching up all that well. There's like seven or eight deviations out of 40 markers. The pattern's close. I don't know. I mean, what do I know about the rate of DNA mutation and its causes? Beats me. Um... But still, it's worth a shot, <laughs> you know, to see whether our Lewis line at least matches up with those other ones with their deviations. We have the documents to back up those other ones, so we want to match up with those, with the other ones that we have the documentation for. And who knows, we might find better documentation in Tennessee, but to me it seems to be a big black hole. <laughs> um, and if it wasn't for um, Boynton Merrill's work, I wouldn't be able to go into the detail I have and draw this alternative conclusion or possibility that I, that I have. Um, I think that's all I really have to cover. I thought I might have had a nuance or two. Oh yeah, I should just probably just show the burial record for, for the fact that there are Lewis's indeed buried over at the cemetery in New Madrid, and I got that information actually from the earthquake that America forgot. Between the three of these books, I was able to draw the overall conclusion that I, that I had. That's very important right there. And again, they're in Missouri.
Now there's some early, earlier generations here, but we're going to get to, this is, yes, the Evergreen Cemetery at New Madrid is where they are buried. Some of them, not, this, uh, the, one of the, the oldest stone there is a Little Burn Lewis, I gather, Jr. There's some other Williams there as well. And Hannah, who married Wilburn. This chart is very, very complicated. But. And then they start getting into other things that I don't know an earthquake man would be quite expert to deal, you know, to be able to deal with. And they, people keep getting bad. And they talk, Mary Wither Lewis was a distant cousin. And the Lewis family is questioning whether he was murdered or killed himself. And that's a whole different topic, but uh, basically they want to exhume his body to figure out whether modern science can determine which, but most people outside the Lewis family are probably a little more convinced based on his earlier attempts that he tried to kill himself, and there's some implications that the Lewis family, because of, there's a lot of intermarriage, uh, that they ended up having some mental instability, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know, I just, I can't, you know, you can't, this is so far back for anybody that's a descendant of these people to, just, to make a conclusion like that is just, to me, very sloppy, and it's very irresponsible. Um, over time, you know, we're talking about individuals that were born 200 years ago. I mean, it's just you can't you can't draw conclusions like that um, for anybody today, and even back then, no one's no one that's alive today has ever met these these people, and we're living in a very different world back then. And some of the th comments that were made about Meriwether Lewis was that he had he had actually gone to Natchez, but they say that's Natchez, Tennessee, not Mississippi. That's where I'm wondering where it is. Um, or on the Natchez Trail, maybe that's where I'm confused, and it goes to Tennessee, I'm not sure. Um, that, that was a very rough area. A lot of people got robbed, and remember whether Lewis's gold was stolen while well, he was there, and that's perfectly plausible. He was killed that way, murdered. I don't see any reason why not to not think it's plausible. Most people doing writing blogs or reports on this say that both sides have pretty good evidence to support them. Jefferson didn't seem to feel surprised when uh, when it was said that you know uh, Meriwether Lewis the man that went on the Lewis and Clark expedition and killed himself. Um, I think that's all to say. So anyway, I think I'm going to be able to get this back. Uh, I have a much better feeling about this theory than the other. There's still a hole in it. In fact, oh, the hole. What's the hole? Well, when Letitia remarried, and I, I may have glanced over this, but I'll explain this in more detail. When, when Letitia married um, her second husband, which was Christopher Hout, was it? Christopher Houts. Um, there was speculation on the message board about, you know, if you want to read it, you can search Google for Lewis, comma, James R. Born, 1812, Kentucky. There was um, speculation that maybe once she remarried that James R. Lewis might have taken on the Hout's name. And if he did, I did find one person that could be that individual that would, if indeed he is would rule out this second theory. And if I ever get to the point where all my theories are exhausted, then obviously <laughs> Randolph Lewis didn't come from here, and that's it. So anyway, so here is a burial location for James B. Houts, and it, well, the only thing that's wrong is that it does say he was born at Salem, Livingston, Kentucky. Salem was a nearby town to Smithland. Okay, it wasn't Smithland, and 
again, the marriage date for, uh, let's, I'll, let's take a look at that. He's got himself as a birth date of 1817, but I'll tell you, my own grandfather didn't know whether he was born in 1902, 3, or 4. <laughs> and the records I've seen vary between all three of them, so let's take a look at Lilleburn Lewis that this individual would descend from. So where do I get this wrong? I'm, there's too many Lilleburns. So there's Betsy Lewis's first wife. His second wife is Lachi or Letitia. First marriage to Lilburn was in 1810, and then he remarried in 1815. So if this man here was born in 1817, as he says, and that marriage date is right, then this man is a child of Christopher Houts and not the man I'm looking for. But that would explain things because the fact that this individual is named James, uh, this is, I'm glad I'm ending here, this individual that's named James is also is a, living in a household with half-brother that was born named James Randolph. Well, one of them's going to go by something else, and I don't think that James here, who continue to use James, uh, was uh, the one that got picked to have the middle name used for his first name. I think Randolph was, and I think he continued to use it from there. And I think the evidence of him being in Missouri gives me a very, I think I'm, Pretty. I think I'm pretty, I, so close. <laughs> I, I would like to have a little more. I'd like to have a little bit more about this Randolph that's up there. I mean, there again, there are other Lewises in Smith County, Tennessee. Maybe I'd want to eliminate the idea it was Benjamin or the Mary that was there. And if I can do that, I'll be happy. Now, it was said that one of the brothers actually went to Lake County, Tennessee. I guess I'll get over to there. And that was a man named... Um, Is that a higher generation? Robert R. Lewis. I guess it was a higher generation. How could it be a higher generation? Maybe it's Lilburn's child now. Could he have been Randolph's child? Yes, this Robert R. Lewis. <coughs> uh, Boynton Merrill says went to Lake County, Tennessee. Now. One of your family members in Tennessee, maybe you got another reason to go there. Uh, could the Randolph that we're concerned with actually be a child of Robert R.? Yes, but are any children named Randolph over Robert mentioned in Burton Merrill's book? No. That's possibility number three. I'm not going to rule that out. Um, he certainly was a surviving descendant of this, this area. So, I think I'm done. And I hope this provides a better, clear picture as to what might have happened. And I hope it actually turns out to be true.